Okay, well, in honor of Teddy Month and in honor of uh, my girlfriend getting me a cool gift, I am playing uh, Dragon Quest Nine, And it is a the only Dragon Quest I haven't played, like the canonical ones, that I haven't played to to the completion that isn't 10 because 10 isn't... Uh, Ten's over there across the pond, but uh, it's a it's on the DS, and it's by Level Five, who did eight. And if anybody knows me, I love Dragon Quest, and I know Teddy knows I love, and Teddy loves Dragon Quest. We're we're the Dragon Quest crew, I think it's safe to say. And uh, it's really, really a great little game. Um, it plays like any Dragon Quest. You're just a, you know, a, a young character usually, and you venture out into the world. In this one, you're an angel, whatever they're, the celestial, and uh, you lose your wings and you become a person, and it's your job to find your way back up into the sky, and you do it through helping people down on the planet below. Um, you know, uh, uh, in playing it now, after going through some of the other Dragon Quests that we've done, uh, I think it plays a lot like Dragon Quest three, uh, with level five's touch of eight's like leveling system. So you c very early on, you can recruit party members to help you and you can, you know, recruit up to three and you go through the game with those party members and just level them up as whatever they are, like their jobs. And I I'm not super, super far, so I don't have necessarily some of the bigger details and I know it's going to get more complicated but um, you you just level up you know if you're a uh, fighter you can level up your different weapons that you can do just it, it takes a leveling system of of eight which I really really like I like the way they do it where you you put points in either like a certain weapon that you like or just a general skill that you you want to have and uh, it's not it, it lets you be the class that you really really want instead of just the just the class of a warrior or something so I really like that. Now, what's interesting about this game is that it's actually meant to be played as a multiplayer game. Uh, you are by yourself and it's, it's, you're supposed to play online uh, with other oh. people. And uh, it's, it was a really unique idea and it hadn't really been done in Dragon Quest at the time. Of course, the next game in the series, Dragon Quest X, which is only in Japan, was actually an MMORPG that they they tried to get to go to work, which I'm sure it worked great over there. Uh, I've played a little bit of it over here. I have a translation going. It's just not really the same. Um, I have my own issues with that, but you know I could talk about that some other time. Uh, as Dragon Quest Nine, it I really really admire that they tried to get all of the striving improvements that they did with Eight onto the DS. My only complaint is graphical. It. I, I, you know, Dragon Quest VIII, if you guys have seen it, it takes this really cool cell shaded art style and makes it just pop. And it's one of the, the games, on, I know you're talking about the PS2 doesn't generally look good. Dragon Quest VIII looks amazing and still does. It kind of has that Wind Waker effect where they took, you know, what works, which is like that really, really cartoony style. And now it just transcends time. You can play it anytime and it just always looks beautiful. Dragon Quest VIII did that too. Ironically, I feel like level five tried to hit that on the DS and it's mm. the exact opposite. It actually looks really bad, like quite often uh, because the characters don't have a roundness to them. Uh, they're very, they're still one dimensional, even though it's supposed to be in a 3d world. So when they turn, it just, then the camera's turning around them, their, their portraits kind of like shift awkwardly into the next camera yeah. frame. Uh, you know, some people aren't into visuals. I, I really do think visuals are a lot of par are part of the Dragon Quest charm, and uh, it, it's a detriment for sure. And I'm playing on original hardware. I mean, I guess I'm not because I'm playing on my 3D or 2DS XL, but I am playing with a cartridge. So it, it theoretically, I'm playing it the way it's meant to be, and it has slowdown as well. So a little disappointed uh, by some of those features, and I'm and I'm early, so if it gets any more complicated, it's probably just going to get worse. So that's kind of a letdown. But as far as the gameplay goes, it's absolutely phenomenal. It does a lot of really cool things. Like if you attack the same character, the same enemy with the, with multiple characters, you actually get a damage multiplier. 
So th there's some strategy in how you organize it and how you actually deal with agility, which most games don't even give a shit about agility, although it's there. Uh, but it's just they went first, I guess. Uh, but uh, it's it's a really, really fun game. My only concern, besides the graphics, would be that going forward, it doesn't yet have a strong like push forward. And I know that was one of Alex's complaints, and usually I don't mind. But in this game, there's literally nothing. Like, like the only point is to collect, like, do more good deeds so you can go up into the sky. But that isn't really like a story. That's like a, like here's your reason to keep to to do quests. But it's not like I have to reach this place because of this. It's it's just it's very it seems artificial so far, and that's a, that's a concern of mine. But I'm gonna keep playing because it's super fun, and I just love the classes. Uh, but that's my little spiel on Dragon Quest Nine. Nice. Your your take on the graphics reminds me of um actually of Zelda how Wind Waker looks so beautiful, and then you move over to Phantom Hourglass, and it looks like somebody sat on the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's the yeah. same thing. Yeah. You're like, oh, 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 this is a little bit Wind Waker. <laughs> it's especially rough now because you have the context of the 3DS Dragon Quest 7 and 8 with mm -hmm. their like super touched up polished remasters. I mean, even I think 8 on 3DS, you know, I think there's some debate about PS2 versus 3DS look, but it's like, I think it's pretty damn impressive. Um, 7 was really good. You could probably argue it could have used some touch ups, but to go back to that like DS era, of the polygons must have been tough um you said it's meant to be played kind of like in a collaborative kind of setting did you ever see the commercial with what's dr evil son's name oh the actor. shit seth green yeah he did a commercial for dragon quest 9 super random Guys, I have an extra ticket to the concert tonight. Take, take me. me, dude. Take me. Take <laughs> me. <laughs> choice is right. In Dragon Quest IX, I had to choose between a martial artist and a warrior to take into battle with me. I chose a warrior. Who will you choose? <laughs> decisions, decisions. But he was at like a McDonald's or something and like connecting with people playing it. How detrimental is it that... Um, that kind of aspect is not as uh, easily accessible. You know, I think it might be a cultural thing. I don't know how well it would work to have this game be multiplayer here in America, and I'm sure it didn't do great as far as that goes. Uh, like, I would love to play it with you. That would be freaking amazing. But at the same time, it's also the way I can, the way I see it, it seems like it would just be a hell of a lot easier to use the AI companions and just either give them instructions or just, you know, outright guide them on what to do on every attack. I don't necessarily see the benefit of having multiplayer. It kind of reminds me of 4 and I, th I well, more 4. Remember we're playing 4 and it's like, uh, you can use the Wi-Fi to go to other people's worlds and do stuff. It's just like a feature that you notice is there, and it, it's like it reminds you occasionally that it's there. It's like, okay, but, um, yeah. I guess it's I won't like be a doing that. Cast thing. <laughs> yeah, it's not like game breaking. Got you. Yeah, yeah. You can right. you can still function fully without it, but it, I even wonder just how well it would play with it. Like it seems like it would yeah. be kind of a burden, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think some games that we've played since have, like, done the multiplayer thing maybe a little better. Like, I think of, like, even Triforce Heroes, arguably for as stupid as it was, you know, like, I guess just that system of, like, you know, like, you do have some purpose in playing with people online. It really does lead me to some questions, though, about this game, because it feels like every other Dragon Quest game, the, the purpose and the, the story and just the quest is pretty damn clear. Um, even 11, which, you know, has a lot, like, you know, it's, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, but I always wonder, like, what's the point of nine? Like, you're celestials, you got these angel wings, but like, what are you doing? It's just taking down the demon lord, but it's just couched in that? Is it like, because I feel like there's more significance to the other dragon quests, but I, I also have only, I've never really played nine, so. Yeah, that's my concern, is it, it, 
I mean, it starts off, it's it's clear and what the end goal is, is to get back because you've lost your wings. So you have to do good deeds and there's a, there's more stuff to it than that. But but you have to do good deeds to find your way back. I assume, because a lot of Dragon Quests start off pretty slow. Seven famously doesn't really get started for like 10 hours or however long, like four, whatever it is. But it, I'm assuming at some point there's going to be a, a connecting thread where it's like, this is what's been causing, because there was an earthquake. This is what's been causing the earthquake. And then you're going to be like, oh, okay, that's really like the bad guy. And that's where it's going to go. Haven't hit it yet, and I've done two towns. But maybe, maybe, I'm hoping. Uh, and people really like it online. So I'm gonna, I'm just going to assume that it's there and just keep chugging away. Mm. But I, I could see how somebody that hasn't played it really or isn't familiar with Dragon Quest would just be like, it's got a cool concept, but I have no idea why I would keep playing. So, yeah. mm -hmm. and I also get why they would do it that way because if it was meant for online play, you you wouldn't necessarily want to have like this super engaging story that you would just mm -hmm. like hop into somebody's game and like take over for. So I I can sort of see it both ways. I'm just hoping that doesn't guide the entire game that it's just going to be one quest after the other. Yeah, the idea of a multiplayer RPG, I don't know, it's kind of a turn off for me. If there's a, you know, something that, like, I take it 9 is as long as like, the other games. I think so. Let me check real quick. There's a guidebook for it. It's as big as Hyrule Historia. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't know. It's also Prima Guides. It's the <laughs> same guys that did the shitty Final Fantasy guide. Hopefully there's no uh, timeline in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a 50 hour game. Damn. Yeah, see, that's a lot for our uh, co op experience, too. Yeah, I couldn't. I feel like I'd be wanting to sit down and I play through it together. I couldn't fathom doing that. Yeah. That would work, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe it's just before it's time, too. Because, like, I mean, at that time, like, who was really using DS Wi Fi? Like, some people may have tried, like, Mario Kart matches, but I feel like until the 3DS came along, like, that feature was never, like, as well implemented. Like, Pokemon, it wasn't, maybe? Like, yeah, maybe. It, like black and white had its like online features, but I don't know. Diamond and Pearl had online stuff too. What I recall, I I, I didn't use it much though. I, think I wanted to try back in the day because like I was big into the Pokemon, but like I just this it was too like it did, my DS would not connect to the router at home. It's like I'm not I didn't like McDonald's when I was a kid, so like. <laughs> that was only like fast food branch that would have the Wi-Fi enabled. Yeah. And so I was always like, well, I guess I'll just sacrifice this feature. Or you can go get a Big Mac. <laughs> well, teenage me <laughs> wouldn't. <laughs> 30 year old me, maybe. Good choice, Spencer. Thank you. It's a game I know you'll be playing. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a couple of years. <laughs> hey, y'all, don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers. <laughs>